In a recent captivating video that I shared, Pastor Evans, a member of the Sabbath Day Church of God in Jamaica, publicly accused Pastor Jennings of blasphemy. The crux of the matter is that I heard him make a statement, and that statement, don't drop off your seats now, is totally blasphemous. In response, Pastor Jennings forcefully confronted Evans, urging him to provide biblical evidence for the alleged blasphemy, demanding specific references from the Bible, including chapter and verse. As a result of this confrontation, Pastor Jennings and Evans engaged in a heated debate in the subsequent episode. The focus of their discussion was on how to observe the Sabbath. Pastor Jennings argued that Sabbath, meaning rest, is a continuous practice where believers rest from sin every day. He further asserted that Jesus, through his actions, established a new law for believers to follow, effectively breaking the traditional Sabbath observance. In opposition to Pastor Jennings, Pastor Evans disagreed, emphasizing that the Sabbath should be observed on the seventh day, pointing to the biblical account of God resting on that day as the foundation for Sabbath observance. Are we to keep the Sabbath and keep it holy according to what Jesus, Jesus and the apostles preached? If so, give chapter and verse where Jesus preached it and the apostles preached it. Get it right now. The disagreement between the two pastors highlights differing interpretations and perspectives on the biblical teachings regarding the Sabbath. In the midst of the debate, Pastor Evans asserted, you can't compare spiritual things with the Spirit, contending that such a practice was never conducted in the Bible. You just stood oh, hold on. The, the, no, the, the point that you were trying to prove What's that? is that flesh and spirit can be compared. Isn't that what you are trying to prove? Flesh and spirit can be compared. Cannot be there's, there's no comparison. It isn't. Because In rebuttal, Pastor Jennings confidently retorted, there's nothing you can't tell me I can't do with that Bible. He went on to elucidate how spiritual things can indeed be compared to the spirit, challenging Pastor Evans to explain his perspective. He just said that I cannot compare works of the flesh with the works of the spirit and yet he quoted the scripture that justified my comparing right. comparing spiritual things things things, things. with spiritual. spiritual all right first corinthians chapter 2 we're at verse 13 get me which also things we speak which also things we say. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. But what? But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Uh -huh. Comparing. Comparing. Spiritual things. Spiritual things. With spiritual. Now, there's God, the spirit, and then there's spiritual things. Spiritual things. You don't know the language of the book. God is a spirit. But now you have another phrase. Spiritual Spiritual things. Things. things and the spiritual thing is an earthly thing that performed the works of the spirit after pastor jennings compared the spiritual realm with spirit evans the latter changed his statement asserting i never said they couldn't compare i already have agreed However, Pastor Jennings rebutted, emphasizing the millions of people listening over the air who heard Evans make the initial statement there's no comparison. Pastor Jennings, with a few quotes from the Bible, confidently asserted, It is given to me. There is nothing in there I can't interpret, and what he can do, Evans can't do. He further challenged Evans by citing a scripture where Peter walked on water, highlighting that Peter was not God, yet he performed a spiritual act. Pastor Jennings firmly stated, I'm not saying you're a healer, but if God uses you, he's comparing a spiritual thing. In response to the question, Evans commented on Pastor Jennings, stating, You're, 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 you're very slippery. Am I what? Slippery. <laughs> you're very slick. Acknowledging the intricate nature of the discussion, and Pastor Jennings' skillful handling of the spiritual comparisons. Pastor Jennings boldly challenged, Is this the best you've got, Jamaica, to challenge me? As the debate continued regarding the Sabbath, 
Evans asserted that in Hebrews 4, the Bible states that when Jesus rested on the seventh day, our rest is to be similar to God's. Evans questioned when God sinned if our rest is supposed to be similar to God's rest from sin. In response, Jennings emphasized that God never sinned. Evans then questioned why, if God rested on the seventh day, do we not follow Him and rest from our physical work? Pastor Jennings clarified that God did not command us to stop our physical work, as he stated that if we do not work, we do not eat. Jennings explained that in the old times, resting from physical work wasn't the same as what God did because when referring to physical work, it pertains to the flesh, while God is a spirit. Later in the discussion, Pastor Jennings asked Evans if Jesus preached to his apostles to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Evans answered affirmatively, and Jennings challenged him to find it in the Bible. Then, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Jesus preached that to his apostles. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. Read it where Jesus told his apostles, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy in the New Testament church. Evans initially quoted Matthew 24, 20 saying, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, during a conversation with Pastor Jennings. However, Pastor Jennings pointed out that it wasn't the response he was seeking. Later, Evans amended his statement, clarifying, they no, keep he the didn't. the Sabbath day like it was commanded in the Old Testament. If no, he, he did, he didn't, 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 he didn't. Then why did you say it? I did not say it. No. As the ongoing debate delves into the comparison of commandments between the Old and New Testaments, Pastor Jennings underscores the transition from the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament to their relevance in the New Testament. Emphasizing the teachings of Jesus to his apostles, Jennings directs attention to Matthew 19, specifically verse 16, where an individual approaches Jesus, addressing him as good master and seeking guidance on attaining eternal life. Jennings highlights the significance of Jesus as the Lord of the Sabbath, emphasizing his authority surpassing even that of the Sabbath. Connecting this authority to the pursuit of eternal life, Jennings asserts that any actions undertaken must align with the Scripture. Referring to verse 19, where Jesus responds to the seeker, Jennings points out the exchange where Jesus deflects being called good and redirects attention to the one true goodness God. Jesus then urges the individual to keep the commandments as a prerequisite for entering into life. Drawing from the subsequent verses, Jennings narrows down the specific commandments Jesus highlights in response to the seeker's inquiry. Before I read further, which commandment should we keep today? Ten? You say ten? Ten. All right. I want to compare your words with Jesus' words. That's right. Quoting verse 20, Jennings underscores Jesus' directives, emphasizing the importance of adhering to commandments such as, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. In essence, Pastor Jennings weaves together the narrative, examining the transition from the Old Testament commandments to the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament. Jesus said, Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Let's count. Jesus said what? Thou shalt do no murder. How many is that? One. What's next? Thou shalt not commit adultery. How many is that? Two. What else? Thou shalt not steal. How many is that? Three. What else? Thou shalt not bear false witness. How many is that? Four. What else? Honor thy father and thy mother. How many is that? Five. What else? And, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. How many is that? Six. How many did Jesus preach? Through his analysis of Matthew 19, 16, 20, Jennings underscores the continued relevance of certain commandments and their role in the pursuit of eternal life according to Jesus' teachings. 
During the debate's culmination, Evans directly questioned Pastor Jennings about his apparent inconsistency in not observing the Sabbath despite preaching about it. In response, Pastor Jennings provided his perspective. Just a minute. I preach the Sabbath. I don't preach to keep it. All right. Go ahead. Pastor Jennings emphasized the distinction in his response. He directed a question to Evans, pointing out that Evans quoted the scripture, Pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, attributing it to Jesus preaching about the Sabbath. He then asked Evans if Jesus actually observed the Sabbath. In response, Evans affirmed, saying, Yes. Following this, Pastor Jennings requested Evans to locate and provide the specific scripture supporting this claim. Jesus, keep the Sabbath, sent Luke 4, verse 16. Read, read, read for me. Jesus kept the Sabbath. Yes. Let's see that Jesus keep the Sabbath, and let's see that Jesus command it to be preached. In uh, St. Luke chapter 4, and verse 16. Follow me. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Yes. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day oh. and stood up for it to read. Just went in the synagogue. Jennings stressed the significance of the scripture highlighting that Jesus specifically entered the temple. He emphasized the need for Evans to provide a thorough explanation for this event. Despite the challenge, Evans was unable to support his response. Later, Pastor Jennings responded offering Bible explanation, asserting that Jesus broke the Sabbath. Give chapter and verse. St. John chapter 5, we're starting in verse 17. What is it? But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Yes. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him. The Jews sought to kill him. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath. <laughs> Did he break it? No. He not only had broken the Sabbath. Wait a minute. No. Just a minute. Just a minute. Now, we're going to see how honest, honest this so-called preacher is. Pastor Jennings asserted from the Bible that the Jews wanted to condemn Jesus not only for allegedly breaking the Sabbath, but also for proclaiming God as his father. In response, Evans argued that the Jews were making false accusations against Jesus and that he had not violated the Sabbath. Pastor Jennings countered by emphasizing that they were closely observing Jesus' actions, deeds, and his spoken words, suggesting that both aspects were under scrutiny. Who did it? Jesus answered them. Who did it? Jesus answered them. This is how dishonest these preachers are. They get in their pulpit with the Bible, and then when you crush them out of the Bible, they call the Bible a lie. Jesus answered them. Jesus answered them. Who did it? Jesus answered them. Who did it? Jesus answered them. You say give your Bible what God said. Is Jesus Christ God? Sir. Is he God? Sir, is sir. Jesus answered. Yes, Jesus is God. We got through that already. Jesus, Jesus answered. Yeah, what he answered? Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him. Then what? Because hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't stop the, the scripture. Don't stop the scripture. What is that? Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but also said. But also said. But also said that God was his father. They was looking at not only what Jesus was doing, That's but right. what he was saying. That's right. Himself equal Making with God. himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus. Then answered Jesus. And said unto them, Verily, <laughs> verily, I say unto you. I say to you. The Son can do nothing of himself. Wait a minute. If I break the Sabbath, I didn't do it on my own. But what if he, I talk, I didn't do it on my own. I do nothing, nothing of myself. Nothing of himself. But what? But what saith he the Father do? But wait a minute. But what he saith the Father do. Oh. But what? What he saith the Father he see do. The Father do. For what thing soever he doeth. Whatever God do. These also doeth the Son likewise. Oh. No. All right. Y'all reached nowhere. All right. The debate with Pastor Jennings reached its conclusion at that point. We invite you to share your thoughts in the comment section.
What is your perspective on the debate? Are you still observing the Sabbath as outlined in the Old Testament, or are you aligning your beliefs with the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament? Please express your views by commenting with your answer. Thank you. So if you've enjoyed this episode of Truth Seeker Hub, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for upcoming posts. Thank you for watching.